Do you want to learn how to create a dynamic profile page by user role? Then stick around to find out how. I'm Thomas with Brain Trust Digital. I'm a full stack developer obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning full stack development, please consider subscribing below. In this AWS Rails tutorial, we're gonna do something a bit different. We got an awesome request from a user that I'll put up on the screen now. Jorge was looking for how to create a separate profile page or dynamically display the profile page by user role. The example Jorge gives is of a marketplace with buyers and sellers, showing different profiles for each user type. In our case, to apply this to the AWS Rails application, I'm going to add roles and then populate them with a default moderator and contributor role. Then we're going to display a different profile page depending on the logged in user's role. This was a really fun video for me to create and I thought it was a great request. So I hope that this answer really helps you out and helps some other people out on an interesting technique I use to accomplish this. The technique I'm gonna be using is not one that I created, but rather one I learned from watching Ruby on Rails tutorials from Railscast and GoRails and some of the people I watched while I was trying to learn and actually still watch to this day. So I definitely, I didn't create this technique, but rather I just think this is an interesting use case for the technique that I learned long ago from these other creators. With that being said, let's get into the AWS Rails tutorial. As you can see, we have our AWS Rails application running locally. So the first thing we're gonna do is switch over to the terminal, and we're gonna generate our role model. Here you can see we're generating a new model. We're gonna call that role, and we're gonna give it a name and a code. We'll use the name for the front end presentation, and then we're gonna use the code on the back end to figure out which template we'd like to display. Since both of these columns will just be strings, we don't need to pass in the data type. So we can go ahead and view that migration really quickly. As you can see, it's just like you'd expect. We're creating the roles table. We're giving a string of name as well as a string of code and the timestamps. Let's go ahead and run that database migration now. Rails DB migrate. While we're here, we should actually also add the role ID column to our users table. Rails G migration, add role ID to users. We're gonna add this as a references, which will add our foreign key for us. Here is the role ID on users migration. We're gonna make one quick change here. We're gonna allow this to be null since we already have users in place. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to get this migration through. Now we can go ahead and migrate the database again. Next, we're gonna flip over to our application and write some tasks to populate our roles. Adding roles in this case is merely setup to be able to show the different method to display our dynamic profiles. We're not gonna have a front end interface at this time for our roles. So instead, we're just gonna populate those via tasks. I've already showed how to populate data via the seeds file. So I thought maybe it'd be nice to show a different method and a couple of practices that I use there. So we're gonna go ahead and click new file. I'm gonna save this right away. And then we'll just call it oneoff.rake. In this case, we're gonna have a few, so I'll just go ahead and paste them in and then we can walk through it. First task here is populate roles. What this does is looks for a role by the code, in this case default, and then either grabs the first by that code or creates a new instance. Once this instance is found or created, then it updates this instance with name as the capitalized default. We repeat this process for moderator and contributor. I found this to be a pretty clean way to write your tasks, so you can easily run this task many times without issue. If at a later date you wanna add more data to the task, this is completely fine. Say in the future we added position and then populate it for each value. You could just run this task again, and as long as your codes have not changed, this would be completely fine. This is part of the reason why I like to split out code and name. This allows for a, a lot of nice benefits like this, while even though they're very similar. For example, you could translate name to different languages while leaving code the same. Next, we're setting some defaults. So the first thing we're doing is grabbing and caching the new roles we just created. So we're gonna grab 
default role. Instead, we're gonna run a find by instead of a where so that we have a single instance. This is effectively the same as role.where, code equals default, dot first. Uh, just a little bit cleaner way to present that. The next line here rolls through all users and updates them to our default role. Then we call out two specific users, Bear, and make him a moderator, and then myself and make me a contributor. This final task is something that's a little bit useful. In this particular case, it's a bit overkill, but it's something that's really nice if you end up having a lot of tasks as part of a feature deploy. This is simply a task that runs other tasks. So instead of having to call these two tasks, populate roles and default roles, after we deploy, we can just call roles underscore all, and we'll just run this series of tasks in order. While it's a bit overkill here, since we only have two tasks, you can imagine if you had 10 or 15 tasks as part of a large deployment, that would be really useful and really quick to only have a single task to run to get everything in line in production. Flip back over to the console and run our task. There we go, it looks like that completed. Now that that's complete, that takes care of all of the current users, but what about new users? Let's flip back over to our application and handle that now. First we need to jump into the models and add the new relationships. So in role, we're gonna add a has many users. Make sure users is plural there. Then in user, we're gonna say belongs to role. In this case, we have to pass this as optional true. We first allowed this to be optional at the database level by changing the null option to false in the add reference migration. Here we're doing it at the model level as well, as we'll actually be adding the default role after the user signs up. To accomplish this, we're going to add a block down here in the private section. We're going to create a new method, set default role. We're going to set this method to update the role ID to the role with the code default. We're going to go ahead and call this with an after create hook. Finally, since device manages our users, we need to add some code to the app controller to allow for this new role ID to be accepted as one of the sign up parameters. This code is taken directly from the devise GitHub gems documentation. What we're doing is creating a new method called config permitted parameters. We're permitting on signup the new key role underscore ID. Then we call this method in a before action if we're accessing a device controller. I'll include a link to the device documentation in the description below in case you want more information. If we flip back over to the front end application, we go ahead and test this out. So we're gonna click sign up. We're gonna create a new user, Chelsea, my wife, at example.com, and we'll go ahead and give this user a password, and then click sign up. For now, we're not gonna save this password as this is only a temporary, like a test user, but you can see we've successfully signed up. So now let's flip back over to the terminal. We'll open up the Rails console with Rails C, and then we'll grab that last user. Here you can see there's our new user, Chelsea. If we then grab that last user's role, we really set with the default role. Now let's go ahead and move on to our dynamic profiles. We can flip back over to our application and start to work on our profile page. So here in our application, you can see the user show page, which is our current profile. On the front end, you can see this page by clicking on the logged in user. In this case, our example user, Chelsea. You can also click on other users profiles and see their pages, like my page or Bear's page. In this case, Chelsea, Bear, and I are all different user roles. We can quickly demonstrate that by putting out the user role to the front end website. Just above the bio, we can add a block of code to do so now. We'll open up ERB tags and then output the users role dot name. And if we refresh the page, you can see that Bear is a moderator. Chelsea is the default user type and I am in the contributor role. To set this up, first let's extract all of this common code into a partial. We'll grab everything we'd like to be dynamic by user role, which is effectively the entire profile section here, and we'll cut that. Then we're gonna create a new folder in users called profile. This will just give us a nice clean way to organize all of our various profile types. Within the profile folder, we're gonna go ahead and create a default partial. Then we'll paste in the content that we just cut 
from our show page. We'll go ahead and render that partial in the show page. Then if we reload the page, you can see we just named our partial incorrectly. We forgot the leading underscore. Let's go ahead and add that really quickly now. And then refresh once more. And there you go. The page works again, as you can see, for all of our different user types. Now let's go ahead and make this dynamic by user type. If you flip back over to our user show page, you can see one method for making this page dynamic by role. You can replace this partial inclusion with a series of conditionals. We you split out the user by type and then render a partial accordingly. As you can see, this can get really sloppy really quickly, building an ever increasing conditional chain as you continue to add user roles. Instead, we're gonna use a method in Rails paired with a clever technique that I learned from watching two of my favorite Ruby on Rails tutorial creators. But we'll get to those in a minute. First, on the Rails side of things, we're going to use the lookup context action view helper, specifically the template exists method. If we click on the link now, as you can see, this method is looking for the template name that we want to find, as well as the prefix, whether or not this is a partial, some keys and some extra options. We're gonna go ahead and use this method to dynamically present our profile partials. We flip back over to the code. First thing we can do is wipe out our current code and replace it with our new lookup context and walk through it. I first saw usage of the lookup context technique in a Railscast video. Unfortunately, they stopped creating new videos about seven years ago. Then came GoRails. For me, GoRails kind of picked up where Railscast left off providing extremely useful feature-based tutorials. This is not an ad, I'm just a big fan. So if you're trying to learn Ruby on Rails, I'd highly recommend that you subscribe to GoRails. Seriously, pause the video, go to GoRails.com, sign up, you'll thank me later. With that out of the way, let's walk through the technique we're using here. As you can see, we're performing a conditional against the lookup context to see if the template exists. The template we're checking for is the roll code of the current user. We're gonna pass in the user's path, and then finally we're gonna say true, meaning that this is a partial. This is gonna look for a partial at users slash profile slash the current user's roll code. If that partial exists, then it will render that partial, but pass in the user that we're currently viewing. If not, then we're just gonna display our default partial. The functionality that this gives you is that me as a contributor could have a different view of Bear's profile than Chelsea as a default user. One last point I wanted to make when looking at how I'm using this technique. In my case, it makes more sense that the current user gets to see more privileged information or maybe have more ability for actions. Whereas in the requested example, it would make more sense for the at instance user in both cases. So that no matter who's logged in looking at the page, the buyer's profile always looks like a buyer profile design and the seller profile always looks like a seller profile's design. I'm gonna back out those changes, but I just wanted to point that difference out because you really wanna hone in and pay attention to what you place in those two positions. So if we save this and go ahead and refresh our page, you can see that we're still correctly rendering the user profile. So now let's go ahead and make some changes for the different role types. To do so, all we need to do is add new partials into this user's profile folder. I just wanna interrupt for one second and see if you're finding value. Please subscribe below, hit the like button, turn on the bell notification for, for future notifications of, of content like this. And if you are, we have a limited time offer our coworker here, Bear, will perform one trick per subscriber. Yes. Down. Yes. Roll over. Good boy. You're the goodest boy. Good boy. Down. Down. Oh my gosh. We're going viral, Bear. So here, let's copy the default template and use that as a base. We're gonna create a different view for our moderators. So first, we have to name this identically to the user role code. In our case, that's moderator, all lowercase, dot .html .erb. Don't forget to lead with an underscore. We'll go ahead and save that and then paste in our code. In the case of our moderators, maybe we'll add an ability that doesn't really exist to be able to warn a user if their profile contains something inappropriate. Again, this doesn't actually do anything, 
but just from a demonstration standpoint so that you can see that when we log in as a moderator in a few minutes, that this user will have these additional items in the profile pages as they view them. Next, let's go ahead and add one for our contributors as well. Again, you're gonna say underscore and then the user role code dot html dot erb. We're gonna go ahead and save that. Again, we'll copy the moderator this time as the starting point. Here, we'll add a few more fake links to lock and unlock user accounts. Again, these don't actually do anything, just more to show an example of what you could do. The power here is that you could have completely different views depending on the user that's logged in. If we flip back over to the front end application, here you can see my profile when logged in as Chelsea, the default user. Nothing changes here. This should look exactly like it did before. But then if we flip over to a new tab where I'm logged in as Bear on the same profile, you can see the addition of this fake warn user link that we added to the moderator role. Finally, if you look at my own profile logged in the contributor role, you have the additional fake lock and unlock user account buttons. Obviously these fake links are a super simple example, but you can really get creative with how you use these dynamic profile pages. So the same page can look very different for very different types of users. I mentioned previously examples where I learned this technique from Railscast and GoRails. They both use this technique for notification system where you present different partials by event type. So I just want to throw this out there as a different way to use this type of de technique while also answering Jorge's question. I personally like to use this technique for product pages as well. Maybe you have several products categorized in a few different product types and the various types lend to being better displayed and specific layouts. I hope you found this helpful. I find this to be a really powerful and useful technique. If you did find benefit here, I would really appreciate it if you consider liking and subscribing the video. And with that, I'll catch you in the next AWS Rails tutorial.